On today's adventure, we're at Ripley's Aquarium of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. We'll be bringing you inside this aquarium located at Broadway at the beach to give you a full guided tour inside to check out all of the penguins, sharks, stingrays, play areas, food, sloths, sloths eating food, and much more. We'll also be doing a glass bottom boat ride and just help you decide if this is something you would like to do on a future visit to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Before we head inside, we just want to go over a few things. The aquarium is typically open from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m., a little later on the weekends. Again, this is located at Broadway at the beach, which we've done a full tour of that you can watch next to get an idea of places to eat and other things to do here. There's no cost to park here, and tickets for those 12 and up are $40. And here's a look at the children's pricing as well. Military and first responders can get 30% off with a valid ID. You don't have to get tickets in advance, but it can save you time if it is a busy Saturday or holiday from waiting in line. We did want to point out that you can also bundle other Ripley's attractions with your aquarium admission to save money, such as their Illusion Lab and Crazy Golf, which we have also done a video on and we'll put in the pinned comment below. We wanted to point out the aquarium is stroller friendly, so you can bring your own or rent one for $3. Now that we've gotten all the nitty gritty out of the way, let's head inside and get this tour started. We are here today at Ripley's Aquarium of Myrtle Beach with Brooks and she's going to show us around. We're excited to see what the differences are of this aquarium versus our aquarium back home in Gatlinburg. So we're going to go around, look at some things and have you explain things. Absolutely. You guys ready? We're ready. Awesome. Let's get started. So this is Ocean Wonders. Um, it's an exhibit that opened up a couple years ago. It's not our newest one, but still is partially new. This is where we house all of our penguins, our penguin playhouses in here. And also when we have our breakfasts with the penguin, this is hosted in here as well. So we can go ahead and take a quick dive into it. I'm looking at the pot-bellied seahorses. Mm -hmm. They're just pot-bellied. They're not pregnant or anything. They're like not that. pregnant. Um, they just got really, really big bellies. They're so <laughs> yeah, cute. Yeah, they are. These are my favorites. And the little babies like to hang out in the back and hold on to the, to the seaweed in the back with the mamas. Okay. And what's that fish there? That one right there is one of our puffer fish. Okay. So this is our zebra mantis shrimp. Um, they can see up to 100,000 colors. So if we saw them in our eyes, we would see a completely different array of colors than what they actually see currently. It can get to about 15 inches long, so that's not even close to how big they can get. That would make a really big shrimp cocktail. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so this is cheddar. She is our orange American lobster. She was actually going to be sent over to Red Lobster um, down in Florida, and we came in and rescued her, and now she lives with us. Is that a rare breed of It is, lobster? so normally their natural pigmentation would be more of like a red or a dark red, um, as we see normal lobsters. But she came out orange, so it's very, very rare. Oh, now, wow. These guys are huge. These are our regular American lobsters. They have two big main claws at the front of them. Are these lobsters that people would normally eat? Um, not specifically this size. These are very, very big in size. Um, the regular uh, red lobster is kind of what cheddar is. Um, those are the types that you would see on like menus and things like that. Um, these guys would be a little too big to catch and eat. You guys actually came in perfect time. We're about to feed our penguins. Oh, beautiful. There's a penguin, a penguin, a penguin. Oh, a penguin? It's a Hannah. A oh, penguin? <laughs> We hand feed all of our penguins. Okay. Um, so what the lady in the blue is doing, she is um, handing them out. And then the one behind her, she's actually taking note of which penguin is eating and how much they are eating. So we can guarantee that each penguin eats the certain amount that okay. they need. I see they have their little name tags just yeah, like the so other Yeah, so the one. blue bands mean that they are boys. And then the red bands are going to be the, um, the female penguins. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys do the penguins on parade? Yeah, so we have a penguin parade every day at 1.30. We either take them around in a cart or we have them waddle around the building just depending on how busy it is. If you guys had to take a guess, what do you think they sound like? Now, would it be crazy if I told you they sound like donkeys? Really? Yeah, as soon as you walk in there, they sound like... Ah, ah, ah. Like exactly how a donkey sounds. Now, if you guys want to be able to touch these guys, we do offer a um, penguin experience okay. where you guys can actually go in up to 10 people, can go in that little classroom that's right behind us, 
and you actually get to touch a penguin, play with the penguin, and then if you do the VIP experience, you get to paint with the penguin. Really? So we have animal safe paint that you guys get to choose a color, they step all over the paint, and then waddle all over the painting to create a masterpiece for you. Oh, that's so They're cool. very beautiful. Now, like us, where we have um, our fingerprints to identify, their stripes and their spots actually identify them. So not um, every penguin will have the same markings on them. Little fun fact, they're also very infatuated with shoelaces. Really? <laughs> very. <laughs> So shoelaces and keys seem to be the the main toy for them. What kind of penguins are these? These are African penguins. So they are in a warmer climate. Right? Yeah, so unlike regular penguins where you um, envision like the snow and them going down this uh, ice and everything, these are actually African penguins, like I said, so they're used to the warmer environment. Um, actually stays anywhere from 70 to 80 degrees in here. So oh, wow. it's pretty warm, pretty okay. warm. Anna's gonna try out the tunnel. There she is. Hi. She's gonna go through the exit. Hi. There she goes. Whoa. Did you make a penguin sound? No. What would it sound like? A donkey. Can you do an impression? <laughs> Not really. Whenever we do get penguins in, we actually trade with our sister aquarium. So we actually do have a couple penguins in here that are from Gatlinburg. Oh. So you guys might be able to recognize a couple of them. That's awesome. But we also do it with eggs too. So if we get um, penguins in or uh, penguin eggs in, they stay back in our incubation system, which is right over there. And we incubate them and we can actually hatch them right here in the aquarium and raise them. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. And they go in this area. Yep. So this they is their there. little training pool. If we need to um, incubate them for any reason, um, also if we need to get them away from the other penguins for any reason, give them a little break. They can come in here, swim around, do their checkups. This is also where we do their um, physicals. So if we got to bring them in, weigh them, check on their feathers, check on their height or anything like that, we bring them back in this room as well. So you got a penguin shop here. For... Yep. So we have our little pop-ups. We have a pop-up shop for our penguin exhibit. And then we also have a pop-up shop for our sloth exhibit as well, oh. which just recently opened. I'm super excited about. Yeah, we're excited to see mm -hmm. the sloths. Now, since our penguins are endangered, we are a part of the SANCOP program, which is a nonprofit for the rehabilitation and um, conservation of African birds. Okay. So um, anything that you guys purchase in the gift shop that says SANCOP on them, we actually take a um, percentage of that and we donate it to SANCOP to help the conservation of uh, African birds. That's wonderful. Yeah. So this is Savage Seas. This is one of our interchangeable exhibits. So next time you guys come um, in a couple years, this might be something completely different. Hawaiian exhibit before, we've had Pearl Harbor um, a long, long time ago. It was like a slime exhibit. Um, we change it out pretty often. So that looks fun. <laughs> this is our interactive sand table. So the different animals will come out and Depending yeah, on depending on how deep it is. So like the deepest right over here, you'll see sea turtles and manta rays swimming with the octopus. And then over here in the shallow, you'll see like little pieces of algae and smaller fish. This is kind of like our um, sonar area where it kind of can be in like a little submarine. We've got buttons and everything over there. Ready? Start. We've got our hands in the glove. Just got 30 seconds. Electrical. I get the airlock. No! Hurry, we're running out of air. Nice job. All right. <laughs> it said don't touch. I clearly just touched it. So a number of interactive elements that you can play with over here. This is where we keep our piranhas and also our caiman as well. Which is kind of like if you imagine a big alligator and just take it and shrink it down, that's our caiman. Okay. This is where we have our catfish and our arowana, which is that very, very long fish right there. We also have our freshwater stingrays in this tank as well. So this is our rainbow rock area. This is where my favorite tanks are. So these are our lionfish. Unfortunately, they are an invasive species, but they look pretty in the, in the glass. Do you see one? Get away. Yes. Do you see one? <laughs> Don't go Swim near it. Away. Swim the other way. <laughs> so we can take a look at our sloth valley, and we'll come back around to the to the big tank. This is the newest area. Yep. Yes. How long will this exhibit be here? So this exhibit is permanent. Oh, it yes. is. Okay. It is permanent. Um, this used to be an interchangeable exhibit. So if you were here um, before that, it was Aloha Cove. And then we also had an extension to our Pearl Harbor exhibit down here as well. But we have two slots. One is Rico and the other one is Cleo. Cleo is going to be the one that's more blonde in color. I believe she's the one currently down at the bottom. 
and then Rico is up at the top. When are they most active? So they're actually nocturnal animals, so they're going to be most active during the nighttime. They can actually sleep up to 12 to 15 hours a day. So if you guys do see them active at night, you are very lucky because they love to sleep. Okay. <laughs> and they actually only come down from the tree um, one time, and that is to poop. And they don't go very often, right? They do not. I think they only go once a week. Wow. Yeah. Very slow metabolism. Very, very, very. They don't eat a lot, I take it then. No, um, so we feed them um, once a day. So we'll come in and their diet is mainly like vegetables, um, corn and uh, fruits and things like that. We do also do offer a sloth experience. So for right now, we're not touching our sloths or holding them, but you can actually go in the tank with them. Just to give you guys a warning, it's about 80 to 90 degrees in there. It is very, very warm. They like to stay in the warm environments in the forest. This is our little pop-up shop for our sloths. So we got like Han Slolo shirts up there and things like that with cute little sloths so on them. Cute. Absolutely. So cute. Absolutely. So they can just take that claw, hook it onto a tree and call it a day and hang there as long as they would like. Super Amazing. cool. They have it. They have it built. They yeah. have it. <laughs> <laughs> they are living the life. Living the life. Living the sleepy life. Exactly. <laughs> Yes, we are. They are come back so around. adorable. Yeah. So adorable. They are. So this is personally one of my favorite tanks in the aquarium. This is Rainbow Rock. So this is actually where we do our scuba dive shows. Okay. Our mermaids actually swim with our stingrays in the stingray tank, which I think it's different at Gatlinburg. Yes. You guys have it in your in this rainbow tank. tank? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's the same thing over there, but I know the coral looks real, but all of it is actually fake. There's only one tank in the entire building that actually has real coral. When do they do the scuba diving? They do those at 10 and 2. So relaxing. Just oh, I could stand in front of that tank forever. <laughs> and we will go through the tunnel if you guys would like. Yeah. There are accessibility screens for people who are blind or deaf or impaired in any way. We have this screen. I believe you guys have them in Gatlinburg as well. Um, but we have them here, and then we also have them up in our stingray tank as well. Now this guy right here is our nurse shark. Now, unlike other sharks where they have to constantly be moving in order to breathe, she does not. She can rest and sleep. She's also nocturnal. So during the day, like she is now, she's sleeping, kind of taking her rest, and at nighttime you'll see her more active. Aside from sharks, what else is in this tank? Yeah, so we have our um, sea turtle. We have many, many different array of different types of fish, like um, our yellow tails. So we have our sawfish, which is right over there. And we actually are lucky enough to have three of them. Which they are very, very highly endangered. Um, unfortunately, they are hunted for their rodstrum, which is their saw at the front, which gets their name sawfish. That was Micah's favorite. Yeah? Yes, at the... Uh, Gatlinburg Aquarium. You know. Now there is a reason I'm calling them a saw fish and not a saw shark. They are closely related to something else. Do you want to take a guess? It's, I'll give you a hint. It's something in this building. I think I have a guess. I think you have it. I'll let the kids guess first. Give you a hint. Look at their, look at their wide, their wide fins. A stingray. A stingray. Yes. So. Our sawfish are more closely related to stingrays, hence the sawfish and not saw shark. Our biggest one is about 14 feet long. She is a very, very big mama. And then we have the smallest one coming in at about 11 feet. And I say small, but 11 feet is still a really, really big fish. Is this your glass bottom boat? This is. So we do glass bottom boat tours. They are $9.99 added on. Um, so you guys are more than welcome to go up and take a tour. The entire um, bottom of the boat is completely glass. And unlike in here where the glass is curved, our fish actually look a little bit bigger than what they are. So that area right there is the only way that you can see their actual size up close, which is pretty cool. These run every day in the on season, um, starting at 10 a.m. and then they end around 4.40 is gonna be their last tour. You can give them a wave and they'll wave back. Hi! <laughs> We look like people fish to them. <laughs> to make a fish face, Hannah. <laughs> so we do have one sea turtle in here. Her name is Gabby. She's right over here in the corner. Now Gabby is a little older. Um, last time I checked, I believe she's about 65, 66 years old. She's very do they old. live to be over 100? Am I correct in Yes, that? they can live to be over 100 years old. I'm pretty sure I learned that from Nemo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how many sharks are in here? 
a lot. Um, I know we have anywhere from 23 to 30 sharks. We always take them. Um, sometimes we add more sharks in. Sometimes we take them out if they have to be like hospitalized or just to do a little checkup or anything like that. But at all times, there's anywhere between 23 to 30 sharks in here at all times, which is crazy. But a little fun fact about Gabby, she actually came um, cold shock off of the coast of Florida. And cold shock means that she was found in waters where her heart rate was really, really, really low. And she actually came in with loggerhead sea turtles. And if you know anything about loggerhead sea turtles, they're used to eating squid and different types of meats and fish, where Gabby is supposed to be a green sea turtle where she's only supposed to be eating vegetables. So whenever she came in with these loggerheads, she was getting used to eating squid and fish, all of the really, really good stuff. So whenever she came here, we tried to feed her like a green sea turtle, feed her vegetables and everything, and she was not having it. <laughs> so. In order, uh, because her diet is a little different than regular green sea turtles, her shell isn't as green as what a regular sea turtle would be. Um, it kind of has more brown or darker spots in color. And also it deems her to be irreleasable because she's too stubborn to eat what she's actually supposed to be right. eating. So. <laughs> she's definitely our diva of the tank. Yeah. <laughs> so these are our schooling fish. Um, these are going to be our French grunts, our Spanish grunts, and our mackerels as well. Do you want to take a guess of the what's the difference between a French grunt and a Spanish grunt? You don't know? One speaks Spanish and one speaks French. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> wee wee. There's Gabby. There's a good view. Normally she likes to hide. Um, she's a big napper, so we're actually coming up on her little nap spot right here, but it looks like she's out adventuring this morning. Now we also have a zebra shark in here as well, which I'll try to point her out. Um, the reason I do point her out, she is my favorite. So zebra sharks are actually born with the stripes like a zebra and their pigmentation as they grow older, they turn into spots. Okay. So if you see an uh, animal in here with spots, it's a zebra shark. If you see a full grown shark that has stripes, it's a leopard shark. Okay. Yeah. The big main ones that you guys see swimming around are going to be our sand tiger sharks and then our sand bar sharks, which are the smaller, um, more gray in color sharks. So this is our eel section. This is where all of our eels like to hang out. So this is Discovery Center, aka the fun zone for the kids. So we have our brand new water table that we just put in. And we also have our pirate ship, which we are adding two touch tanks in them as well, which we can go over there and look at them. So this will be our jellyfish touch tank. And then on the other side, we're gonna actually have it open where you can touch sea anemones, um, starfish, little Pacific things like that. We have our photo desk where they can come in, purchase any pictures. Um, we now have our kiosk, so it's all self-serve. So these are most of the systems for our big tanks. Um, just gives you a broad idea of how big the systems actually have to be in order to run this facility. So just to compare that big tank, the tunnel that we just walked through is 175,000 gallons of water. I think yeah. your tank is like five gallons. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that makes my 50 gallon tank at home seem really yeah. small. <laughs> So this is our clam shell. It's where our puffer fish like to hang out. And if you guys want to, you can actually crawl under there and we have flashlight fish. They glow in the dark. What? So we have this little pop-up and then if you keep on going, our flashlight fish are right behind them. Now you can go further and see the flashlight fish. So there's like a cave back there? Yeah, they should be over to the right. So we are going into our living gallery exhibit. This is also one of my favorite exhibits. And if you guys look up, it's kind of a little hidden tank. We have some of our baby stingrays, or some of the ones that are currently quarantined. And actually, one of our stingrays actually had babies last week in really? our ray tank. Yeah, so they're currently in the back getting housed up and everything, but okay. whenever they're big enough, they'll be in this tank right here with the other babies. So like I mentioned, we only have one tank in the building that actually houses live coral, and then it'll be this tank right here. It's also the brightest, obviously. And if you guys look close enough, there's a couple baby starfish hidden in here. I've only been able to find them a couple times, but if you look close enough, you'll be able to find them. No. It's literally right there. How can you not see it? <laughs> I, I this know. Tiny. It's like super tiny. This bottom very, one. Very small. Underneath it? Right there, mom. Right there. That is so small. See? Wow. Now I'm Once you see, see one, them. they yeah. all start popping out. Yeah. Yep. So right over here we have our giant Pacific octopus. Oh. Find him. He's right over there in the corner. 
So octopus are actually really, really smart. So whenever we feed them, sometimes we put them kind of like inside of a little ball with holes, um, and then it interlocks and then comes apart like that, and their food's on the inside. So we make it a puzzle game for them. Um, it's also like a little experience for them and a little game to try to get to their food. That way it's not so easy for them. So kind of like our seahorses that we saw up at the front, these are going to be our sea dragons. Our mermaid show is actually starting. Oh. Do you guys want to take a look at that real yeah. quick? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. I heard the fine. music. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> are going to be a little smaller and then the Gatlinburg ones are really 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 big. These are our green iguanas. Wow. These guys are a little funky. <laughs> this one right over here and then we got two I believe oh, wow. there's one right there one might be oh no one's right underneath he's taking a nap. Can you pet the stingrays? Yeah we're gonna go up there and you guys actually touch the stingrays as well. Oh you have an oxalato. We do. They like to hide. Oh there's one right over here if you see them. So even though they're amphibians, they actually stay in the water their entire life. Oh my god! <laughs> Comes a big one, Hannah. Here, oh, he took a turn. So we're coming up on our last exhibit, which is our planet jellies. Now these are moon jellies. So if you guys go in the ocean or you visit Myrtle Beach here soon, um, these are probably what you guys are going to see in the water. Now the bottoms do sting you a very, very little bit, but you can actually touch the soft top of the jellyfish and they won't sting you at all. Luckily, if you guys go in the water now, it's not too, too bad. The season of them coming by is already past. Now, if you guys get stung by these, unfortunately, I will not be able to help you. Um, <laughs> their sting is very, very strong. And as you can see, their tentacles, once they sting you, unfortunately, they do get wrapped around your leg or whatever body part. So it's very, very, very intense if you get stung by these guys. Warmer waters than Myrtle Beach. They're pretty to look at. Not so pretty to touch. <laughs> yeah. Now these guys are upside down jellyfish. Now a little fun fact, crabs will actually put these jellyfish on their back and use them as a defense mechanism. So then they can walk around the aquarium floor with the jellyfish. They're not going to get touched because there's a jellyfish on top of them. Smart crab. Yeah. <laughs> and also the jellyfish can um, catch any little particles that's um, in the water and everything. So when the crab's taking them around on his back, he can just grab little bits of food at the water. So it helps both of them. Yeah. Coming up more on Pacific sea nettles. So this will kind of give you a good map of where they're located. So it's kind of around like California out to Florida in the Gulf Coast and then over towards Australia in those warmer waters. Okay. So luckily not here. <laughs> luckily not here. So this is our um, feeding frenzy. We do like um, pizzas, pretzels, churros, hot dogs, little snacks, things like that. We also have a playground for the kiddos to play on while the adults are eating. Also have different types of um, slushies. We have a penguin drink and a mermaid drink where we do um, boba and gummies on top of the slushies oh. as well. It is 1.30. It's time for the penguin parade. <laughs> You can add the glass bottom boat ride onto your aquarium admission for $10. You can do so up at the front desk or on this kiosk at the boat entrance and find the next available time. Oh, that's so scary. There is, it's all glass. There's no non-glass part. This will be they fun. They can't step on. Okay. Oh. oh. We don't need that, we'll just step. I think we're good, okay? Just step. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, it's scary. Welcome aboard the Glass Bottom Boat Adventure here at Ripley's. You guys are currently sitting on top of the largest exhibit here we have in the aquarium. It is designed to hold 750,000 gallons of water. Now all that water is man-made here in the aquarium. Um, even though we are right by the beach, we do make it in-house uh, just because we want all the water to be clean and healthy for all the animals in here. Now right away you will see one of our sand tiger sharks. And there goes a sandbar. This big guy down here, that is a red drum fish. It does get its name from the reddish hue of its body, as well as the drumming noise it makes when it talks and communicates. Now there goes Gabby, our green sea turtle. She's the only sea turtle we do have in this aquarium. It is real. These teeth are 100% real, and they are 100% sharp. Now with that, you guys can touch the teeth if you'd like. Just be mindful that they are sharp. So they keep regrowing teeth and losing teeth and regrowing more teeth and losing more teeth. So they can go through like several thousands within their lifetime. So this over here is our male green sawfish. He's actually hiding part of his saw in the sand, probably getting a good nap in. Oh, this is a female green sawfish. Um, she's the largest animal we have here in the aquarium. She's about 14 to 14 and a half feet long. Around 450 pounds. All right. What do you think, Hannah? It was really fun. I really liked it. We were really close to the shark, and like, I don't know, it was a little scary at first, like stepping on the glass, you know, but it was really cool, and I like seeing the sea turtle from like a different angle. So that actually far exceeded my expectations. I actually really just didn't know what to expect, but uh, the glass covers the entire bottom of the boat. And so you're able to see a lot. We saw the sharks, we saw the sawfish, we saw the turtles. And what's really neat is the glass is not curved like the tunnel, it's flat. So you actually see them in their actual size. So I definitely think it's worth the $10 to add that on. Yeah. Well, that wraps up our tour of Ripley's Aquarium of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable in any way, do us a big favor and simply like the video before you leave. Let us know in the comments if you have ever been to or plan to go to Ripley's Aquarium of Myrtle Beach someday. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next adventure.